facts. My name is Prachi. January 17th is Ditch New Year's Resolutions Day, and this is the 11 month December check in for my no buy year. while since I've filmed the semesters in like full swing and I'm like maxed out on classes working really hard so it's been a bit of a struggle to figure out when in the week I can find time to like film and edit stuff but I think I have a system figured out now so we should be seeing consistent uploads again it just took like two and a half weeks of workshopping to get there on the agenda for today is the long overdue December check-in for the 11th month of my no buy year. Like literally as I am filming this now, I think I only have like three weeks to go before my no buy year fully ends. Like I can't believe like I actually did this, like can't believe that I've made it this far. And December and the first parts of January were really really interesting for me because I think the no buy has finally really settled into my bones, which is to say that like I do not feel tempted to buy makeup for quite possibly like the first time in my life <laughs> or at least for the first time in like the last decade. <laughs> now I've pinpointed two specific factors that were really really relevant to my December and the early part of my January in terms of why I'm feeling like I don't really want to buy anything so without any further ado let's get it. Okay, so the two things that I think have contributed to me calming down like the makeup loving goblin inside of me, like the Dudley Dursley spoiled brat kid inside of me that like wants everything and is throwing a tantrum, the two things that I think have really kind of helped calm that down over the last month and a half is that first of all, December and the early parts of January is peak gift giving season for me personally like in my life. And second, I'm actually beginning to feel what I like to call the positive after effects of having done the KonMari method in the specific categories of makeup that I did the KonMari declutter in earlier this year. So that's to some extent lip products and definitely cheek products, blushes, bronzers, highlighters, etc. Alrighty, so the first point, both Christmas and my birthday are within a few short weeks of each other, which means that I've just been like inundated with presents over the last month. And quite a few of them have been makeup. Here I'm going to describe all of the makeup that friends have given me so far. I think there's still like a package or two in the mail, so I'm not sure if there's any makeup in that. If you're worried that a discussion of products is going to be triggering to you, I'm going to leave timestamps somewhere down in the description box and probably in a pinned comment below. So if you like, you can just skip over the section where I talk about what makeup I actually received during the holidays. The main point I kind of want you to take away from it, if you do end up skipping this section, is that I received a lot of makeup. I received 11 pieces of makeup from various friends and family, in addition to a bunch of other very pretty presents that were non-makeup related. I'm going to insert pictures where I like remember to take them, but for some things it's just going to have to be verbal. Here's everything that I got. One of my friends, who really really loves using Glossier products herself, she gave me three different Glossier products. Two of those liquid blush cloud paints in the colors Dawn and Storm, as well as Glossier's Red Lip Gloss. My friend insisted on getting me Dawn because that's basically like a loose translation of my name, and then I think she picked Storm because she was like of the remaining colors that seemed like the darkest one and the one that would be most likely to show up well on your skin. And then she got me the Red Gloss because she really likes the clear version of the Glossier Gloss, and I'm always like this is such a scam like I refuse to pay like is it like I think six seventeen dollars for a clear lip gloss like that's the scam of the century and so she was like here let me get you the red because that way you can't be mad at me for having spent that much money on a clear gloss by the way one of my lovely subscribers who goes by HK on YouTube she said that um, the Glossier cloud paints gave her closed comedones why did I say comedone so weirdly right there. Anyway, she said that it basically like clogged the pores on her cheeks and gave her acne. And so because I'm very, very acne prone, what I decided to do is just open one of the two cloud paints, try it out, being very careful to monitor if it like clogs up the pores on my cheeks or causes any breakouts or anything like that. Because that way, if it does cause me any problems, I haven't opened both of them to try. I can like give one to somebody else completely sealed brand new. And I can even pass off the one that's caused me to break out because I'll only have used it like a very little bit. So so that's one set of birthday presents. Another friend of mine who works in the beauty industry had heard me discuss those hourglass scattered lights and how I thought they were really pretty looking but really overpriced and just generally out of my price range for like a single eyeshadow. So my friend actually sent me four hourglass scattered lights that had been sent to their office like earlier this year and because the office was done using them and nobody was really claiming them, my friend was allowed to take them home and then send them to me. 
I don't know what the names of the specific hourglass shadows that were sent to me were, but color-wise, one of them was this like berry cranberry color that I'm wearing on my eyes. There was also an olive, like a bronzy gold, and then something that's more like a rose goldy color. As you can see, they're super pretty, and I've just been wearing them really frequently, like one shade smudged all over the lid and crease. The last friend to have given me makeup for Christmas slash my birthday, like, oh my god, you guys, it's so insane what she did. Now, you guys don't know this, because I never filmed, like, a wishlist video during my no-buy year, but earlier this year, a K-beauty YouTuber called Pony Park collaborated with MAC Cosmetics for this, like, stunning collection, and I wanted it so bad because that collection like the aesthetic of that collection the products the styling the everything like that was it chief like it was so beautiful and the thing is pony is crazy famous in k beauty circles and the collection came all the way out in september so i knew that by the time my no by year ended on february 5th 2020 like huge chunks of that collection would be entirely sold out if the collection wasn't entirely sold out completely. So I just kind of like resigned myself to missing out on the collection, but it was the one thing, the one release of the year where I was like, man, I really regret that I'm on a no-buy. Like, I hate that I have to sit this one out. And then, this January, my lovely, lovely friend, who I had excitedly discussed the collection with back when it was first announced with like all of those promo photos, she gave me my combined Christmas birthday present and I had an absolute breakdown <laughs> because she had planned out and bought for me all the way back in September when the collection first released both of the highlighters in the collection, the beautiful limited edition Fix Plus bottle, and one of the lip products. This stunning Korean style blurred berry lip mousse called Off the Record. She took time out of her schedule, like right when the collection launched, to go buy all of these items and then she held on to them for all these months to surprise me and I was just so like overwhelmed with gratitude. And that really is like the overarching point. Maybe it's because I just haven't been buying makeup all this time or maybe it's because all of these gifts were so like incredibly thoughtful and intensely personal on the part of my friends, but I feel this overwhelming sense of gratitude for all of the beautiful things that have been given to me. And I feel like there's like nothing else I could possibly want or need to buy right now in this world. Everything given to me during this holiday and birthday season has been so just beautiful and enriching and meaningful to my life. And not just the makeup, because I also received this like really beautiful elegant purse from my mom and this really really pretty like necklace and pendant from my stepdad. And of course I received the snowshoes I had asked for. And so I just feel like I'm living in such a state of abundance right now. I don't feel a sense of lack. It's hard to feel like you're in want of or lacking something when you've just been given so much beautiful stuff. And for me, like a huge part of my very toxic relationship with makeup, it comes from a sense of lack. It comes from a sense of not having or not being enough from this like scarcity mindset. And right now, I just don't feel that sense of scarcity, that sense of like not having enough. In fact, I feel quite the opposite. I feel like I'm in a state of abundance. And so the desire to shop or acquire new things, it just, it isn't there. I'm kind of curious to know how long that feeling will last because it's been like a couple of weeks and so far it hasn't gone away, but I know it can't last forever. Specifically because, and I've mentioned this before where I kind of talked about the really emotional side of buying makeup, but having enough for me is very often keyed into being enough. Do I feel like I am enough? So I know that in moments where my self-esteem is really low or where I talk down to myself or where I just like feel like I am failing in certain aspects of my life, when I feel like I am like lacking or not enough in certain aspects of my life, that is often the moment at which I feel the urge to buy stuff. And right now, coming off of like the high of the holiday season and the high of my birthday and the start of a semester that's like going well so far, I don't feel that. Don't know how long it'll last, but I feel like at the very least in the realm of makeup, it's gonna last for a while because receiving 11 items at once, like that's so much stuff. 
there's a bunch of it that hasn't been opened or tested or really tried. So right now I'm actually existing in a state where I feel overwhelmed by the amount of new stuff in my life. And instead of viewing that sense of overwhelm as like a bad thing, the way that I traditionally would have, I'm actually viewing it as a good thing and I'm kind of riding it out a little longer because the longer I feel overwhelmed by what I have, the less likely I am to go out and <laughs> buy a bunch of other stuff. Don't know if that's 100% healthy or if anyone else can relate to that, but that's one major factor for how I've been feeling around buying stuff for the last like month and a half. The second major factor has to do with what I like to call the positive after effects of having done the KonMari method for specific categories of my makeup collections. So KonMari method of decluttering. Feel like everyone and their mom has heard of this method, but if for some reason you haven't, the Cliff Notes version is that you tidy not by location but by category. And the idea is as you're going through the categories, the way you declutter is by holding each item in your hand and asking if it sparks joy. You're supposed to do it in silence, it's a very meditative process and you basically like get in touch with your relationship with things and therefore with your relationship with your past self and your future self. And so as you hold each thing in your hand and you consider how they make you feel as you are holding them, you only keep the things which spark joy and everything else you thank it for having come into your life and served you and then you let go of it. You discard it, recycle it, donate it, whatever. You move it out of your house. Now I'm going to link a video I made up in the cards discussing the KonMari method and the philosophical tension between it and my no buy year in case people are interested in more details and they somehow haven't seen that video. But I've actually been throwing around in my head for a while this idea of creating a video called why I trust the KonMari method and why it's my preferred method for decluttering. And part of it's because it like aligns really well philosophically with the worldview that I was raised with back home in the East. But I also want to discuss in like cold hard terms my experience in the past having done the KonMari method like rigorously for clothes, books, earrings, and nail polishes because post my having done the KonMari method, with those specific categories, my relationship with each of those categories has drastically changed. And not just my relationship with items in each of those categories in my house, but also my relationship with shopping those items. I used to be a compulsive buyer of all four of those categories, clothes, books, earrings, and nail polish. And I absolutely don't exhibit those behaviors anymore. And I didn't have to go on a year-long no-buy to do that. I was able to accomplish that just purely through doing the KonMari method. I've never done an honest, true KonMari declutter of my makeup collection. Even if I sit down thinking I'm going to do the KonMari method, there are always like a whole bunch of other external pressures or forces that end up influencing how I want to declutter. And I've talked about this before in a video that I'm going to link up in the cards. But in the second half of 2019, I started doing the KonMari method for certain categories of my makeup collection that had kind of overwhelmed me. Specifically, cheek products like blushes, bronzers, highlighters. I'm going to link the decluttering playlist up in the cards if anybody hasn't seen it. But something really interesting has happened in the months since I filmed those videos. Because I actually decluttered all of my blushes, bronzers, and highlighters down to the bare minimum, down to just the things that I really, really love, the peak of my collection, my absolute favorite stuff, plus like a couple of things that I was still in the middle of like testing out, when I go to reach for like a blush, bronzer, or a highlighter, I am only confronted with the greatest hits the creme de la creme. Like every single option that I have is just kick-ass, excellent, chef's kiss. And I am struggling to put into words just how like incredibly transformative that is. You know, like she calls the book the life-changing magic of tidying up and you're like, mm, life-changing money? Like that seems like a bit of a reach, ma'am. But there really is something like almost like magically transformative about having even just small sections of your house be purely joyful. So I can definitely see how like if you somehow manage to get your entire house in order like that, it would like on some level really like change or transform your life. Oh my god, do I sound like I belong to a cult? Um, 
Okay, the best analogy I can think of is like, you know those like crime thriller spy movies or whatever? The protagonist will get access to this like really, really distorted piece of audio. Like a piece of audio that sounds like just mangled garbage. Like there's so much extra noise and static and crackling that you just, you can't hear anything. And the protagonist will like hand off that piece of audio to like the tech wizard on the team. And then the tech wizard will like run it through some sort of computer program or algorithm. And the computer program, it just cuts out all of that extra noise, all of that static, so that suddenly, voila, you can hear crystal clear, perfectly, this like key piece of evidence that's crucial to your case. The KonMari method is the computer program that does that. It's the computer program that cuts away all of that noise, all of that static, all of those like random extra mediocre blushes and highlighters that I had bought throughout the years and just kept because I was like, it's okay, I guess, it's fine, it would be terrible to have to like throw this away. All those extra products that were just like cluttering up the physical space in my makeup collection and making me feel like it was just all a bunch of mangled garbage, just like, ugh, whenever I looked at it. But then I ran all of my junk through the KonMari algorithm and I let go of all of that like extra noise, let go of all of those blushes and highlighters that were not giving me joy, and what's left behind? It shines. <laughs> Every single day for the past few months, when I go in to reach for a blush or a highlighter, I am faced with a collection that contains only my favorite things. I'm struck by how much amazing makeup I already own and how well it performs. So paradoxically, by letting go of a bunch of stuff, by having less stuff, I am able to feel a sense of abundance. <laughs> Pairing down and letting go of everything that did not spark joy has truly given me a sense of just how rich and quite frankly kick-ass my collection of blushes and highlighters are. And again, related to the very first point I made about like presence and abundance, the sense of abundance means that I really just don't feel the need to buy stuff. More than that, because I've like cut out all of the excess noise, because it is so apparent to me that all of the cheek products I own are so good, are just like absolutely incredible, it has reset the bar for what new cheek products have to do in order to like engage me. And it's reset that bar at a very, very high point. So here, let me give you like a concrete example, right? I've been talking for like I don't know, it feels like a millennium about those cover effects blushes, right? They were featured quite heavily in my November check-in for my no buy year. But funnily enough, literally as I was editing the video, I realized I actually don't really want those blushes anymore. I haven't wanted the cover effects blushes since at least like mid-November. <laughs> But I've continued to keep them on my like makeup wish list for the last two and a half months because of the memory of how much I wanted them for a certain period of time. Hannah Louise Poston talks a lot about wanting to want, and it was kind of like that. I had at one point wanted those cover effects blushes so intensely that I continued to cling to the idea of wanting them even after the actual desire for them had already faded. And looping it back around, because like, what does this have to do with the KonMari method? For me, I've realized that a large part of that desire fading has to do with the KonMari declutter of blush and highlight products that I did back in September. Because slowly but surely, I found myself thinking, is it actually possible that I will like the Cover FX blush duos in the shades Warm Honey and Spice Cinnamon more than I already love the blushes that I own in similar colors? like Max Melba, Hourglass Mood Exposure, and this one YSL blush that my friend gifted me like last year. And the answer to that question is no. I know that at best what will happen is that I will like the Cover Effects blush duo that I buy as much as I already like Max Melba and Hourglass Mood Exposure and that YSL blush my friend gave me. I will never like the Cover FX blush duo more than I like those three blushes because those three blushes are the creme de la creme of my makeup collection. Of all of the makeup I have bought and amassed over the years, of all of the successive rounds of decluttering that I have done, those three blushes are some of my favorites that have like withstood the test of time and the rigor of the KonMari process because I honed down to just those three blushes, which I know make me so, so happy, any new blush that I buy can only ever match that level of enthusiasm and joy. It can never really top it. 
And considering the similarity in color, so then what the hell's the point of me buying one of those cover effects blush duos? Right? It's like for so long I have bought things to chase the feeling of happiness or the feeling of abundance. And having done the KonMari method for certain specific sections of my makeup collection have really kind of brought into sharp relief that I already have so much and that all of those things contribute so much happiness and meaning to my life. The new makeup out there that's promising to be like the next big thing and make me so so happy, it's not actually going to do that any better than the lovely things I already own. There, you know, there are like a lot of people who are like, oh, like things shouldn't give you happiness, you shouldn't tie your happiness up with things. And I like get that line of logic. I know why a lot of people think that in the West. I think it's an admirable thing. But the reality is like, for my life at least, like beautifully designed, well done physical things do give me a sense of joy and comfort. They give me a sense of security. They do add color and vibrancy to my life. I find beauty and meaning in them, never more so than I do in like people, I never value things above people, but I do find value and meaning in things. And previously I have always chased that sense of happiness, value, meaning outside of the stuff I already own because I've never felt like I had enough or that what I had was even like good. I am instead in the process of learning that the things that I own are already very, very beautiful. and. They are just as well equipped at giving my life joy and beauty and meaning than some like newfangled thing I would have to buy. If I'm going to find happiness in things, they might as well be things I already own. Instead of striving to own more, newer, better, the KonMari method kind of helps me realize that I actually already own some of the best. And that in fact, my like not being cognizant of that fact, it's a disservice to all of the beautiful things I already own and to the choices I have made in the past that have allowed me to acquire those beautiful things. Because each of these items was a thing that either I personally bought and chose with a lot of care or which someone else picked out for me as a present with a lot of care and that I should be able to trust that those things are good enough and not constantly be like seeking the next best thing on the horizon. When I look at my blushes and I see only things which fill me with joy, it kind of kills any sense of dissatisfaction that I previously used to feel when I looked at my blush collection. Because before I would look at it, I would not have a sense of what I owned, I would get really overwhelmed, and I would just feel like, I don't know what I like to use, I don't even know which of these things is good and not good, and I, I just feel blah. And I took that feeling of blah and I translated it to, because I'm feeling blah, I clearly must be lacking something, clearly there's something that's not enough about this collection. And so then I was like out there looking for something else to add in order to make me not feel blah. And funnily enough that sense of fullness or abundance has come not from adding in more but from cutting away like all of the extra noise and static to kind of be able to truly like see all of my things clearly for the first time. I do want to take a moment here to say that this wasn't like an instantaneous process. So it wasn't like I decluttered my blushes, bronzers, and highlighters and then the very next day I was like, I, I am enlightened, I don't want to buy any blush or bronzer or highlighter ever, I'm good, thank you. Like no, that didn't happen. I still had a whole bunch of different blushes and definitely like a whole bunch of different highlighters still on my makeup wish list. This feeling that I'm having right now, it built up over time as I went back in day after day to reach for like a blush or a highlighter and I encountered this very beautiful pared down section of my collection, I just started to realize how good I feel every single time I even just like look at this part of my makeup collection and how satisfied I was with everything that was there post declutter which like I got rid of one third of all the blushes I own so it wasn't like oh I got rid of like one thing and I'm like mm, oh, perfect it was like I got rid of a bunch of stuff and yet I still feel so satisfied with what's been left behind and I have this sense of sort of like amazement at just how incredibly good everything I chose to keep actually is. And another way in which this has kind of like really become evident in my life, like where I've seen these results play out, is when I watch 
videos where people discuss their favorite like blushes or highlighters or bronzers right there was a time period during my no buy year where i really like could not let myself watch those things because they were so incredibly triggering for me i would watch somebody like gush about their favorite blush or this like new highlighter that they really liked or whatever and i would just immediately feel the sense of like I need that. I want it right now. Let me immediately go put it on a wish list. I'm gonna see if I can like swing by a Sephora sometime this week and like swatch it to see if it's all that. It was like just the mention of a blush or a highlighter, which those are like my favorite categories of products. Just somebody mentioning them in a YouTube video was enough to get me like all excited and desirous of wanting the thing. And I literally just don't do that anymore. You know, like, I've heard somebody use this analogy before. I think maybe I've also brought it up in my channel before, but it's like, I am able to finally, for the first time in my life, view makeup in the same way that I view art. Like, during my no buy year in May, I actually went to New York City for a weekend, and I was, like, going through a really tough time during that period. And so that, that like, one weekend that I had that was, like, a break, it was like so incredibly meaningful to me because I was like really going through it and one of the most meaningful aspects was this trip I took to the MoMA because I got to see like my favorite painting of all time, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh and I was just like floored by Water Lilies by Monet and here's the thing, right? I was able to just appreciate them for the beautiful things that they are. Never in my life did it occur to me that I wanted to take them home. It did not even occur to me to like buy a postcard or a poster of either of those paintings to put up in my home. Because with art, I was so capable of being able to distinguish between admiring a beautiful thing for being beautiful and wanting to own that beauty. Does that make sense? Am I making like any sense? It is like so early in the morning folks because I'm trying to avoid construction noises which is why I'm like so stressed that I'm like not coherent right now. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is the same capacity that I've always had with art where I have been able to divorce admiring and truly appreciating beauty with coveting and wanting to own that beauty that is a split that I have been trying to carry over into the world of makeup for so long. Somehow, with blushes and highlighters, I am there. I can see like an absolutely stunning, artistic, beautifully designed, embossed like blush or highlighter, admire and appreciate the like craftsmanship and everything that went behind that without immediately also wanting to own it. And that, that is exactly what I have always wanted for myself and my relationship to beautiful things. And so I'm so excited to do like the rest of my makeup collection at some point after my no buy year ends. I don't even know if I'll do it like directly in February. It might have to wait till like the semester ends in like April, May. But I'm genuinely excited to do the KonMari method with the rest of all of the makeup that I own and with all of the other like sentimental items and trinkets wandering around my house as well. So this is where I am, this is where I've been, this is what's been up for the last like month and a half or so and I'm getting a low battery warning on my camera now so I'm gonna wrap this up. As always, thank you so so much for watching and I hope you have a great upcoming week. And even if the rest of your week ends up becoming messy or imperfect, I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Thanks for watching. Bye. You gotta be there for me too.